Can somebody tell me why the TOL mic is not? He just thinks everybody. I don't know. It's fool because I can't believe. I refuse to believe he's now. really like that.
Welcome, everyone. Welcome to those in the sanctuary and everyone who is joining us online. Welcome to our service and welcome to our hearts. Indeed, today is a Mr. Morning here in Jamaica, but we know that the sun is out there somewhere having fun. We live by sight, by faith, not by sight. So please join me in this opening affirmative prayer this morning. So right here and right now, we just recognize God, the living spirit almighty, the one power, the one presence, expressing through everyone in this service, indeed, the entire creation is God in expression. So from this consciousness, I know that our speaker this morning allows herself to be a clear and open channel for the expression of this one. So I know that the encouragement she brings is one which expands our conscious awareness, which fills our hearts with joy, which blesses, which heals, and liberates all who hear it. And I know that everyone who participates in this service, this love stream this morning, indeed, is a blessing to everyone who they meet as they take the blessings, the lessons from this experience with them everywhere they go, now and forevermore. And for this, I am truly, truly thankful. And I release these words into that perfect law that makes it so, and so it is. Our inspirational reading this morning is from Richard Living, and it's the reading for today, November 8th. And it's titled, I Demonstrate Through the Perfect Law. All laws are laws of God. Whatever reality is, its nature is one. If I wish to demonstrate my good, I must faithfully and fervently declare that the law of the Lord is perfect and that this law is operating in my experience now. I believe that it is the nature of thought to externalize itself, to bring about conditions which exactly corresponds to that thought. Therefore, I turn resolutely from every sense of lack, want, and limitation and declare the perfect law knowing that even though I'm dealing with an invis invis invisible principle, it will be made manifest in my experience. Therefore, today I declare that the law of the Lord is perfect in everything I do. It will externalize happiness. It will bring every good of the soul. There is a secret pathway of peace there is an invisible presence forever externalizing itself for me and through me. Today, I believe in divine guidance. Today, I believe that underneath are the everlasting arms. Today, I rest in this divine assurance and this divine security. I know not only that all is well with my soul, my spirit, and my mind, all is well with my affairs. I sincerely believe that there is a divine presence and law of good which attracts every person and everything to me that belongs to me and which flowing through me reaches out to everything in my life with love, with consideration, in joy and gladness. And so it is. We will now have our praise song. So I'm going to ask everyone in the sanctuary.
to sing along and ask to stand for our praise song. It is You Can Smile, and it's on page two in your programs. And online, it's on the screen. Please be seated. And just join me now in the prayer of our center, which is on a insert in your programs and on the screen for those who are joining us online. The prayer of our center, the temple of light, center for spiritual living, is a sacred field embodying our spiritual community from which the Christ, peace, love, and joy emanate to touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, and to liberate anyone who comes into contact with it in any way. The light of the Christ illumines us, our center, and our environment. Our spiritual community is filled with and surrounded by the presence of God and growing from strength to strength. The power of God expands our consciousness of truth, guiding us ceaselessly along the paths of wisdom, spiritual growth, unfoldment, and attainment. We are blessed, and to God be the honor and the glory forever. And so it is. I will now light the youth candle, and it's also for all the people of the world. I light this candle on behalf of all the youth of the world as we behold the Christ in them. We see them as shining lights onto the world. We love them. We appreciate them. And as he said, we see the Christ in them. And we see it in everyone in the world. God is blessing everyone now. And so it is. And now it's time for our mission song. So please stand again for our mission song.
Reverend John always says. <laughs> and now it's time for our announcements. Our floral arrangement this morning was created by our own Sean Blake. Thank you, Sean. They are beautiful. <laughs> you are invited to spend a few quiet moments in the garden with Reverend John every Monday morning at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Facebook Live. And please join us again on Facebook Live for our spiritual mind healing service on Tuesday, November 10th at 6 p.m. This week, our speaker will be practitioner Sandra Cooper. On Sunday, November 15th, our speaker will be Reverend John Scott and host Reverend Ann Shan. Services at the temple. Please remember to call our office at 876-946-2230 if you are intending to attend our Sunday celebration in person. As you know, congregants attending must wear a face mask and observe the prescribed protocols. Please also remember to maintain physical distancing and to leave the premises as quickly as possible after the service. If you can't bless us with your presence on a Sunday, you can still be with us in consciousness as services continue to be live streamed on Facebook Live. Invitation to new members. If you have been attending services regularly or online, you are invited to become a registered member of our spiritual community. The only prerequisite is your hunger and thirst after righteousness and your attendance at at least one unit of Sands of Mind classes. Please note that we are offering a complimentary face-to-face -face orientation the Sands of Mind for prospective members this Sunday, November 14th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Sorry, sorry, this Saturday, this Saturday, November 14th. Our receiving it ceremony for new members will be on Sunday, November 15th during our morning celebration. Classes. Our Thursday morning face-to-face -face class, Soulful Connecting with Reverend John Scott, continues this week from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Classes cost 1,600 for non-members and 1,200 for members. Classes fees are payable at the office or to our savings account 20941 at the Bank of Nova Scotia, Knoxford Boulevard. Please register by emailing or by calling the office at 876-946-2230. Now, Summit 2020. Our Summit 2020 came to a climax yesterday afternoon with a spectacular closing ceremony. And if you missed it, you really missed something. The planning committee will be sharing a full report on the summit and on the exciting ideas generated and the plans formulated. So you will be hearing a lot more about this exciting initiative in the coming weeks and months. For now, we wish to say a big thank you to all those amazing souls who were part of this transformative summit. Both those who helped to plan and organize it, and those who, are, who participated or gave their support in myriad ways. Contributing for the free the expenses of the summit are still welcome. Or please consider contributing cash by lodging to our savings account, and the number again, 20941, at the Bank of Nova Scotia, New Kingston or to our PayPal account on Facebook Live. Speaking personally, or speaking on behalf of the members of the planning team, 
I wish to express on behalf of all of us in the Thriving Ministry Initiative our gratitude to Lorna Phillips for our outstanding leadership in spearheading Summit 2020. Discover. Discovery. Join Reverend Michael Record for Discovery in the Sanctuary and online from 10.30 a.m. to 11.30 this morning. The topic will be, are my values in alignment with Temple of Light's mission? That's a good question to consider. <laughs> Annual general meeting. Our Annual general meeting is sh scheduled for Sunday, November 22nd, 2020, after our morning celebration at 10.30 a.m. By now, med registered members should have received their notices as well as the agenda, proxy forms, and a form for nominating three new board members. This week, you will be receiving the minutes and the financial report. The meeting will be held here in the sanctuary, and of course, we'll be observing all the COVID protocols. Prayer support. We continue to respond with prayer to the challenges of this special time. Listen to an inspiring prayer by calling our prayer line, 876-978-1167. And if you wish to speak in person with one of our ministers, they may be reached at 876-289-0907 from 8 a.m. to 12 midnight, Monday to Friday. You can also phone in your prayer requests into our office sis, at 876-927-6145 or 876-946-2230. Or you may email us at templeoflight at cwjamaica.com. You may also drop off your prayer requests, tithes, offering, and set appointments for practitioner assistance. If you feel moved to support our ministry of love and light, your loving gifts may be transferred to our savings account, number 20941 at the Bank of Nova Scotia, Knoxford, Knoxford, New Kingston branch. Viewers who join us on Facebook Live, please visit the Home tab on our Facebook page and you will find the link to our PayPal donate button in the top post. If you are worshiping with us in person, there's a basket on either side of the podium in which you can place your love offerings as you exist in the sanctuary. This concludes the announcement. Please join us in singing of the hymn, Morning Has Broken, on page three of your programs. And on the screen, if you are watching us on Facebook Live, Morning Has Broken, please stand.
Please be seated. And now, it is indeed with great pleasure that I present our speaker this morning. She is God's personification of light as a medical doctor and a minister. I give you Reverend Sonia Davidson. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Sanctuary of the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, and welcome those who are on the World Wide Web. We are happy to have you here this morning, and those of you who are not in Jamaica, we have been having showers of blessings. Without the wind, we are grateful for the showers, and we are grateful that the wind has taken a break from us. Now, my talk this morning is definitely inspired by when I was a child. Friends, yesterday the world took a long, deep breath of relief and exhaled. People in many countries felt that a kinder, gentler world was on the horizon, and they showed it, didn't they? As humans, we live in a global mesh of collective consciousness. We are community. Of necessity, that is the human condition. We feel each other, we need each other. It is our natural state. It is inherent in us. We are born to be in community. We, perhaps knowing, feel the intense unknowingly feel the collective joy. And we are not so isolated from human collective pain. We are the human family. We belong to the species Homo sapiens. We belong together. Today I'm smiling. I'm smiling for many reasons, but the one uppermost in my mind is that I'm remembering that almost 50 years ago, on November 9th, 1970, my body was preparing to give birth to my first child, my first bundle of joy to me. I wasn't smiling then, but now I can. I was about to become a different person. I was about to start a new phase in community. There are many innate qualities about a human child, even a newborn baby, which shows that it is born equipped to survive and thrive in community. Just watch out for that big heart melting smile that even a newborn will serve up under the right conditions. When it does it, even the toughest adults their heart is twisted, and they can actually twist that adult around the little fingers. Yes, childhood can be complicated, especially for those who are responsible for giving, giving guidance during the period. period. Yes, yes, there is a, there is a fearless 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 to point, the point of what appears what here is to be the adult, the adult as, as a recklessness. Yes, yes, there is trust. Lack of guile, spontaneity, empathy, open-hearted acceptance of differences, which is akin to unconditional love. Quick to forget and forgive. And to my eyes, most impressive is the apparent certainty that they are the center of their world. A little child acts as if they know that they are loved. Jesus at times spoke of the value of the qualities expressed in childhood. In Matthew 18, verse 3, he said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Yes, he was speaking of the innate qualities of a child, inner child, all the ones I've mentioned before, and others, humility, open-heartedness, 
just honesty. I am truly fascinated with children. Observing them in action makes me think of what Jesus meant. I ask myself, is this how I was when I was a child? In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11, St. Paul in his treatise on love says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I thought like a child. But when I became a man, of course, woman too, I put away childish things. Should we really? Do we lose some of the natural tendency to be part of community as we are altered by our life experiences? Does living tarnish some of the brilliant light with which we came into this world? Do we become so preoccupied with surviving that some of the unborn human, inborn human ability is blunted and dimmed? Yes, we know that as we grow, we mature, and life mellows us, and we are more cautious. So some of the recklessness is lost. Some of the I am, the center of my world, is muted. But yes, friends, should we not recapture some of the things which we believe we have lost in childhood. My granddaughter, Abigail, is 10 years old, and she taught me a valuable lesson about community last Sunday. We were on our way from church, so we stopped at the nearest supermarket to pick up a quick item. I stayed in the car while my daughter and Abby went into the supermarket. They came back in a jiffy, empty-handed. We started to drive off. When Abby started to protest, almost in tears, insistently and repeatedly, because my daughter had not found what she had wanted, she had not bought a snack, which she had offered Abigail, and Abigail had accepted. So Abigail was so insistent, Mom, I want a snack. Mom, Abby, we will get a snack at the other supermarket. Abby, no, Mom, I want it now, Grandma. Abby, why don't you just wait? You will get it soon. Abby, almost in tears, but I have to get it now. Then she confessed as we were driving off. She said, you know, I didn't want that snack for myself. I wanted it for the man. Mom, which man, Abby? That man there. She pointed to an old man on crutches, half hidden behind a column of the supermarket. We had not seen. We were so occupied with our own affairs. We had not noticed. She did. So she said, if you don't, <laughs> she, she thinks that's nothing. Why do you want to mention that? But I will anyway. <laughs> She said, if you don't have the snack, give him some money then. She said insistently, Grandma, but Abby, I have no money with me. Mom, here, Abby, I forgot to drop my collection. Give it to him with a blessing. <laughs> so <laughs> um, we shouted to the old man who hobbled towards the car urgently and with a smile. And Abigail, no. With the broadest of smiles, she reached out to give him the money and a blessing that we had just taught her. People belong together. We are in community. We are community. But so often we are caught up in our own immediate needs that we are oblivious of others' immediate needs. Often it is a mere smile, a nod, a sincere, encouraging word that would make the difference but we are too engrossed with our own primal needs to notice. Children give their love unconditionally. Often they see what we are too busy to see. They feel what often we have forgotten to feel because we have insulated ourselves from caring too deeply about what we have told we can't do anything about. We say we are good people. 
and we are doing the best we can as good citizens. First Corinthians chapter um, one, verse 13 on love says, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gang or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and I understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have and I deliver up my body to be burned, but I have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It is not easy to live in community. As we grow into adulthood, we often leave more helpful attributes of childhood behind, but carry forward at least one attitude which is less helpful as we mature. Community, I've been mentioning the word community, but I came upon one dictionary definition of community which I'll share. It is a so community is a social unit of any size that shares common values. I liked it. However, I wanted more, and so I searched again. The social psychologist M. Scott Peck gave me what I was searching for. He elaborated, community, the facets of a community are interconnected and profoundly interrelated. They create each other and make each other possible. We are connected and we are interdependent. So friends, what we need to remember is that not everyone is at the same stage of development spiritually as was mentioned in 1 Corinthians. We are all a work in progress. And so when we are in community together, some of us may not really yet be there, but we are depending on the others in community to support us, to enhance us, and to see us in our true light as expressions of the divine. And that will allow us to feel a sense of truly connectedness. Congregants and friends of our church met over two weeks as a community to bond, share ideas of how we as individuals and as spiritual community can grow together. The experience was called the summit. It was termed an amazing experience. Indeed, it was a catalyst for growing and deepening as a community. We must continue to thrive as community in the truest sense of the word. Community which respects and even encourages another freedom to take what is given or not given, or even to go to another experience. Community which knows no physical boundaries or borders, which understands that each man is my brother, each man is my friend. That includes those who I have met, those who I have not yet met, and those who I may never met. The June Science of Mind magazine teaches on the subject tangentially about community, and I quote, being in community. Too often it says, we mar our relationships by seeing separation. We isolate ourselves, we build prisons around our hearts. The writer quotes St. Augustine to elaborate on his point. He goes on, we marvel at mountains, waves, oceans, and stars, yet we pass each other without the least bit of word. We are the greatest creation of all. So make an effort to spread some kindness, the writer implores. Again, the social psychologist H.D. Scott Peck tells us, and I agree, he says community is spirit. Community is the manifestation of the divine. The atmosphere of community, he says, is one of love, peace, which is palpable that every member experiences its spirit. If you are thinking as humans, we are not there, you will take heart 
in the metaphor he uses for community, he says, it is a stone which when honed and faceted over time becomes a beautiful gem. Each facet is an integral part of the whole, sparkling and reflecting the light to produce a sparkling gem. Community is built as an ongoing process. And Scott Peck continues to observe, community has definite characteristics. In community, we find inclusiveness, commitment, and consensus. We find spiritual awareness, which manifests as true humility. We find empathy. We find compassion. When I was a child, I thought as a child. Community is a place where people feel safe to be themselves and to expose their deepest fears without being criti critiqued. Where loving candor can be expressed without fear of evoking anger. Where transformation can come from learning first to accept ourselves and to build on what we are manifesting by striving to reveal what we believe to be our indwelling innate beauty. Community is where anyone can lead and everyone knows they can as the occasion demands. Yes, yes, I know that this is the ideal, but that is what we are after. If it, ha if it has not yet come about, it will come, but not by doing only, not by force or by might, but by my spirit, the word of God spoken through Zimbabwe. We, that's from the Bible. We are each a unit within a cosmic web of in, inescapable community. We are here on purpose for a purpose which is unique to each of us. Here is one of my favorite affirmations that I adapt to various situations. Infinite spirit, open my eyes that I may see, my ears that I may hear, my heart that I may love. Teach me all that is necessary for my spiritual growth. Show me what I may bring to my world today. Implicit in this affirmation is the acknowledgement that we can and do design a world by a word. We, each one of us in community, we are each one of us in community, whether this community be church, the workplace, the neighborhood, the family, or profession, or other. Each in each situation, our responsibility is towards the whole. What if within, what if within we feel unheard, unseen? What if we cannot see or hear another silent cry because our inner ear is closed? What if we fail to see another's gesture of friendship because we are looking from outside in rather than the God presence within? What if we have been told or hurt in our hearts, past hurts, hurts and, and super sensitivity and brilliance? brilliance. And warm, and warm the of the indwelling spirit, spirit cannot escape freely to warm another heart and beckon to another soul. What if spirit is attempting to teach but we spend all the time talking at spirit and not spending time listening? It is by practicing the art of listening, of devoting quality time to the silence that we cultivate the constant awareness of the presence of God within us. Dr. Ernest Holmes puts it this way, wherever the mental vision is set, there at the end of that vision is either freedom or bondage, joy or grief. The person who finds himself in God will discover God in others. When we come to believe, as Dr. Holmes encouraged us to do, that the reality at the center of our being is strong, confident, certain and whole, we will become more self-reliant 
and a more valuable contributor to the whole. We meet each person fearlessly, with frankness, openness, and complete understanding. And here's an affirmation, and I'll read it. All my relationships are established in divine reality. All my relationships flow from within. And I'm going to say it again, and you follow after me. All my relationships are established in divine reality. All my relationships are established in divine reality. All my relationships flow from within. All my relationships flow from within. Living from the divine center allows us to see the invisible outstretched hand of another and also for them to see ours. In spirit, there are no strangers, I promise you. Yes, we do come together in community to learn from each other and to support each other. In it, we practice how to love and accept love. And there's an affirmation. Every situation I encounter tends to promote my well-being, increase my happiness and self-expression. So as we give out, it comes back. So I'm going to repeat again. Every situation I encounter tends to promote my well-being. Every situation I encounter tends to promote my well-being. Increase my happiness and self-expression. Increase my happiness and self-expression. Ernest Holmes again says, we all have direct access to the infinite presence, the universal personalness. There could be no more beautiful thought than that the divine spirit is within us. By knowing this, we are taking giant strides towards becoming a glistening facet within the beautiful gem of community. You, we, I have the power. Let us begin to act as if we have dominion. Let us be a little child, humble, trusting, bold, unconditionally accepting. A church as any community is the sum total of its parts. The parts being all of us, its members and congregants. Each brings the self as a gift to the whole, and each takes from the whole what it is ready to receive and capable of receiving. We must cultivate and nurture a strong desire to bring forth the higher consciousness in ourselves. In so doing, we bless not only ourselves, but our community, our country, our world. So let us resolve to awaken the childlike spirit and remember, you are the center of your world. You are indeed a spontaneous radiating center of God. You are a channel through which good flows. And say with me, I am a channel through which good flows. I am a challenge through which God good flows. Giving and receiving, receiving and giving, giving and receiving, receiving and giving. I am a valuable member of community. I am a valuable member of community. Friends, you are, I am, we are valuable members of community. Namaste. I bless you. And now, our little Abigail will come to share with us a musical item. Thank you, Abigail.
Thank you, Abigail. Abigail re um, rehearsed that with her piano teacher, right, Angela, but Angela has apologized for not being here this morning. And we have dear Valerie to fill in the last minute because her road, she lives up in the mountains and her road is blocked. She said she would try to come this morning if she could. I say, Angela, we love you. Stay right where you are. And so Abby is singing this with um, a recorded accompaniment sent by WhatsApp by Angela this morning. And I think we need to applaud Angela and Abigail again. Awesome. Okay, so you know this is when we are going to bless our love offering, right? So we're going to take it in our hands and we are going to say Lovingly I give, joyfully I receive, be thou fruitful, bless, prosper, and enrich. Prosper and enrich everyone you may touch and replenish all of my financial affairs. And so it is. And so we just know a special blessing for all those here who are sharing of their substance with us that the Holy Presence which has prospered and allowed this generosity of love to flow from each person. I know that they are blessed many times over and all the contributions go to the spread of truth. And truly, with every blessing that comes through our church, those who have given are equally blessed. I give thanks that it is so, and so it is. Okay, so our, we're going to do our prayer of Jamaica. And then, yes, you can stand for the prayer of Jamaica, please, right? And then after that, we will just continue standing for the um, closing prayer and the peace song, and then I'll just do a closing blessing. Okay, so the prayer of Jamaica, the radiant light of God's love is now flowing through us and from us to everything and everyone it touches. The eternal light of God's love now completely fills, covers, and surrounds our island Jamaica. The glowing intensity of the light of God's love now interpenetrates and awakens within the hearts and minds of our countrymen and women the truths of life which set free. The light of God's love is flowing and flowing in intensity in the hearts and minds of mankind everywhere. Love, health, harmony, goodwill, peace, uprightness, integrity, joy, prosperity, kindness, and our oneness under God are now established. And so it is. And before we sing our Yes, There Is Love on Earth, I, I just want to remind that those who are on the World Wide Web be free to um, use a PayPal button to contribute, or wherever you are, you can use a PayPal button to contribute, and all of that information is on our web page. Yes, our Facebook page. Okay, so we will sing, yes, there is love on earth.
as we prepare to depart from this experience we call a church service, we know that that love which is God that brought us into being continues to kindle our hearts, that sense of oneness, that sense of appreciation of the beauty of the Godness within us and within every other self so that our days become more tranquil, more peaceful, and we continue to be a light to our world so that wherever we go, we find ourselves in community, sharing, giving, loving, smiling, being joyful always because we know that God is and we are and all is well. So remember to join us on Tuesday for our healing service and also next week Sunday when Reverend John Scott will be taking the service at nine as usual and our healing service is at six on Tuesdays. Bless you and have a wonderful week, everyone. Mm -hmm.